Um, Sam, what's your experience of how competitors are doing in response to this regulation? Uh, the, the <clears throat> well, ourselves and our competitors are, we work in quite an agile industry. And a lot of people think developers are stuck in their ways. In, in fact, they tend to drive things. And we embrace change and actually the part O change is just one of multiple parameters which have changed in the last six months. Um, and that's not just the regulatory environment. The, the thing that's hit us most is is actually unfortunately our government's actions and and the bonds mark bond markets have gone into free fall. Um, cost of construction driven by various political forces has gone through the roof. And many of our competitors mothballing schemes. Unfortunately, these kind of regulatory changes, which are not transitional but hard stops, are causing failures in projects to be progressed as a as a kind of cumulative result. Now, when we're all feeling optimistic in the development world, we're going, well, these were well intentioned. The idea is to improve the environment, save energy, but they were ill thought through in terms of their cumulative effect, whether it's the new part L combined with the new part O combined with really crap air in cities uh, and very noisy environments. And the, the knock on effect is to drive up energy demand to lead to housing which is less energy efficient uh, and to create homes which are less pleasant to live in because you're in conflict with providing daylight uh, at a time when we're also being expected as developers to deliver buildings with higher daylight performance, uh, which has also changed in the last three months. So delivering housing, student accommodation, even hotels has become incredibly challenging without actually leading to sealed buildings with high performance cooling and heating solutions to control the environment to meet the requirement. So unfortunately, what we're seeing amongst our competitors at the moment is that things are going the wrong direction as a result of the regulatory environmental changes and making worse buildings. Um, now I think that's temporary and I and I but I think there is a misunderstanding from those who perhaps put together the regulation and those who have to work with land values and delivery of viable schemes where we're going to have to get to is much better passive design much lower densities in cities that have more space around them is the simplest way of looking at it. But market forces are driving the other direction. So we're kind of stalled. So that that that's where our competitors and ourselves are getting to. And sadly, what that means is that a lot of the money is there's an exodus from residential at exactly the time when you need an influx. And the money, particularly in funds that would previously look to finance, build to rent schemes, et cetera, they are looking to other sectors where the potential for margins is greater. So the sad truth is it, it, it's, it's pretty bleak. Um, those of us working on projects are kind of making sure that we, we, we kind of do our best with it. But I think what we need to see is leniency from the authoritative bodies and a transitional phase of how this can come in. Otherwise, you're going to see complete stalling in the development market um, as a result of other forces having impact on it. So sorry, that's a really long winded answer of saying it's going to take quite a long time. We will get there. We always do. But Not a I hope that various authorities and building control officers, etc., show leniency in the next six to 18 months. Otherwise, we can have some big problems with delivery. <laughs> 